on KDKA-TV. And thanks for spending part of this New Year's Eve morning with us. The end of 2017 actually ended on a high note for those who love jazz. In the distant past, the sound of jazz in Pittsburgh was associated with WYDD, WDUQ, and WAMO. But with changes in economics, listening habits, and the radio business, jazz, jazz fa faded from the scene until a group of determined, dedicated supporters of this American form of music decided that they would do whatever it takes to bring jazz back to Pittsburgh radio. And what a success it has been. The end of 2017 gives the Pittsburgh Jazz Channel three outlets online, 1550 AM and 101 FM. The story of WZUM is really a national broadcasting and music story. And to tell that story, we've invited two guests to this program. Scott Hanley is general manager of WZUM, the Pittsburgh Jazz Channel. Ron Schuler is chairman of Pittsburgh Public Media, a nonprofit organization. Gentlemen, welcome to the show and congratulations on starting a jazz channel, a bunch of them right here in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Thank you, John. Scott, there's no question that jazz has some very deep roots in Pittsburgh, right? It really does. The, the, the piano jazz of, uh, school of, of Pittsburgh was really over 100 years ago. Uh, and uh, artists like Earl Father Hines, a great jazz pianist, was one of the first champions of, of jazz piano that then later Nat King Cole and Oscar Peterson kind of drew their talents from. And then uh, trumpeter Roy Eldridge is from Pittsburgh, and he was the innovator who then led to uh, people like Dizzy Gillespie and others. So many great jazz artists have come from Pittsburgh and gone around the world. And what's wonderful is today, to this day, there's so many great jazz artists still here in the city. Are there a lot of fans? For, of jazz right here in Pittsburgh. There really are. If you uh, look, in fact, at our Jazz Central calendar on our website, you'll see that there's there's anywhere between 30 and 40 live jazz events every week going on in Pittsburgh, which wow. is really kind of amazing. In a, yeah. in a really right. diverse uh, set of uh, locations, the Rivers Club, uh, Andy's at the Fairmont, uh, uh, you'll see it at MCG Jazz, you'll see it at the Afro-American Music Institute. It's really, uh, there are so many great jazz resources in this right. town to pull together. And Ron, you're the chairman of an organization, PPM, mm -hmm. which is the essentially the ownership, it's a nonprofit ownership of these stations, is that right? That is correct. We set this up as a community supported radio station just as uh, jazz uh, was community supported when it was with WDUQ. We had initially started this group really for DUQ at one time. When we were unsuccessful at that, we said, look, jazz is still an institution in this city, and we're going to do something to keep it here. Right. And, Scott, you were the general manager, were you not, of WDUQ way back when, so you ha you're, you're quite familiar with the jazz scene. Uh, definitely. And, you know, although I have a, a great background in journalism, music has also been a very important part of my life. And when I came to Pittsburgh in 1995 and saw how much people enjoyed live music and performance and how much this was still a town and where people go out, it's, it's a great hotbed for, for talent and entertainment. Right. And a station like WZUM fits in perfectly with what this city aspires to be. Well, let's talk about the outlets. I mean, how it is that people in Pittsburgh can listen to jazz as we move into 2018. It's, I mean, you have a variety of ways, AM, FM, online. Talk about that. Tell me about it. Well, initially, back when uh, WZUM uh, was was not even a, a public radio station at one point, it was a commercial radio station. Uh, but the Pittsburgh Jazz Channel started up in 2011 as just an online venue. A few years later, oh. when when uh, the FM station in Bethany, West Virginia, became available, uh, that's when Pittsburgh Public Media acquired 88.1 FM out of Bethany, which serves the Ohio Valley and th that corner of the tri-states area. And then over time, other opportunities arose, and with technology and legal help and, uh, and lots of enthusiasm, uh, WZUM in Braddock was acquired. And then the special opportunity that went with that, with that AM 1550 channel, was something the FCC calls AM revitalization. And that right. allowed us to pursue 101.1 FM for Pittsburgh. You know, it, it is an amazing story. And, and Ron, I know you're an attorney. So I'm sure there are lots of legal challenges and hurdles, particularly through the Federal Communications Commission, as you bring back radio stations. Uh, you know, a lot of folks would say radio's dead. They're going to, you know, they listen to their uh, your kids pull out their iPods and you know just tune sure. in there. You know, well, so, and uh, and you of course you can hear jazz on Sirius XM and you can hear it on Pandora. But what you can't get from those sources 
is really localized programming. You can't get the connection between the jazz community in Pittsburgh and what we're playing. And I think that's really our aspiration, is to help grow that community even more. Uh, it's a great community. I mean, we have great listeners, but, but to feel that local connection is really the function of local programming. Like Now, is it the same programming on all these outlets at the same time? Is that the way it works? Correct. So you can choose if you prefer FM, if you prefer AM, or if you just want to listen online. Whichever has the least static, we encourage people to try. <laughs> <laughs> well, is that <laughs> as you move forward? Because you have low-powered, say, AM, or I, I used to remember that certain stations you could get in the daylight, but then at nighttime you lost power. I mean, is that what and we're talking? That's even the case with WZUM AM 1550. We have to decrease our power at nighttime, but with this new FM signal, we're allowed to then continue the full power programming in the evening on, a on FM 101.1. So you might have to switch around a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Well, and, and I think it's important to remember that, that, that people can use radio much more easily. As, as, as much as people use their phones and their devices, the one thing that we have together when we use radio or television television is we're all watching the same thing at the same time right. and that's one of the ways that you build community right you know I I think of that because I lo only listen to radio in the car but I know there are lots <laughs> of other ways let's we only have a little bit of time left and I want to be sure to talk about how folks in the Pittsburgh area can support what you're doing because well, it's so good the easiest way is of course to go to the website wzum.org okay, uh, we're good. also on Facebook you can follow us there and uh, and like the page and things like that it's a it's a great story but the most important thing is for people to listen and check us out because there's so much that that has been missing in people's lives without having regular uh, awareness of jazz and, and the great and, influence it is in Pittsburgh and contributions are tax deductible they are 501c3 organization a 501c3 yeah. so anybody who wants to make a donation you select just like we did with public uh, the public radio station it's the same kind of exactly concept. the same thing and we are public radio and you are public radio public radio <laughs> but all jazz all the time gentlemen thank you so much for coming in happy new year to you You're great too. luck to you as you uh, move forward in 2018 much appreciate you being on the show thank you when the sunday business page continues why latrobe st vincent college is always looking forward and why